everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys about how to keep a proper laboratory notebook. Um, a very important concept that is sometimes overlooked. So the first thing we want to talk about is how to actually choose a lab notebook. Well, um, keeping with the theme of the Total Science Experience class, your notebook doesn't have to be new. Uh, you can be environmentally responsible and recycle an old notebook with the pages left. That is perfectly fine. However, one thing that we do need to have in a lab notebook are bound edges, preferably without perforated pages, simply because page perforations um, tend to uh, rip and we tend to lose the pages that are really important to us. Um, in addition to that, you should never use loose leaf paper or binders for a lab notebook, simply because you can oftentimes lose the papers. One thing that I'll express uh, throughout is that you need to keep your notebook in a common area, and I'll talk a little bit about, more about that in just a minute. So once you've decided on the lab notebook you're going to use, you need to label the outside with your triad number, with the names of your triad members, and also with all of your contact information. This is very important in case your lab notebook is misplaced or just flat out lost. Um, someone may be able to find it and contact you and return it to you. All right, let's talk about using your notebook. Your notebook is used not only for data collection, but also for taking everyday notes. For every entry that you make, you need to be sure to label the page with the date and the initials of the person or the people working on your experiment. Make sure that every time you interact with your experiments, and that includes just checking on your experiment, watering plants, applying treatments, recording data, etc., that you do label your page with your initials and your date and you make a note of what you've done. If you are wanting to add loose leaf papers into your notebook, for example, if you have information about a chemical you're working with and you don't want to copy all that information onto the pages, you can staple or tape those pages onto the paper in your notebook. I suggest stapling and taping just to be double safe. But you do need to go ahead and label the top of that page with your initials and also the date. Again, every time you are done using your lab notebook for the day, put the notebook back in a common area so that it's available for all of your group members. Common areas include the drawers that are up in the potting room of the greenhouse and also the cabinets that are located in the back of the lab rooms. One of the most important things, and what I cannot stress enough, is that whenever you're writing in your lab notebook, you write legibly. You need to be sure to write very clearly so that you and your group mates can easily decipher the info later on when you're trying to enter it into Excel or SAS Jump. There's no point in spending hours recording your observations for your dependent variables if you're not able to read them in the future. So please be sure to write very legibly. All right, let's talk about how to set up your data recording pages in your lab notebook. Again, organization is key. You should keep the format very simple, and you should make everything extremely clearly written. So as you see here, I've put my initials and also the date at the top of the page. I have my plant ID. I have my first factor, my second factor, and then columns for each one of my dependent variables. Now I know some people in the genomics section are not using two-way factorial designs. Everyone in the ecology section should be using this kind of a statistical design. And that's what this data sheet is set up for because I have two independent variables or two factors. For those of you who are not doing a two-way factorial design, you can talk to your TA about how to set up your data pages appropriately. So let's do a little example just so you know how to enter the data into your actual data sheet. So as you see here, um, I have a statistical design on the left, and it is a two-factor design. In fact, it's a two-by-two, two, two-way factorial. My first factor is species, and I have two levels of that factor, American ginseng and garlic mustard. My second factor is temperature, and I have two levels of that factor. 25 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. So I have two factors for a two by two, two way factorial design. You'll see that in the smallest cell of my design, my replication is five. Of course, in an actual experiment, your replication would be greater than this, 
but for illustrative purposes in this video, I wanted to keep it simple. All right, so I have a replication of five and a total observation number of 20. So I have the same sheet that I had in the previous slide, only I've updated the column headings. I still have my initials on the top and I have the date on the top. For my plant ID, I ID one through 20. So I'm IDing all 20 of these plants so I can keep track of them and keep them separate from each other. I have my first factor, which is species. And you'll see that instead of writing out garlic mustard and American ginseng, I've coded these as GM for garlic mustard, AG for American ginseng. For my second factor, temperature, I have 25 degrees, 30 degrees, 25 degrees, and 30 degrees. And you might wonder why I've staggered them like this. I'll talk about that in just a moment. I have my first dependent variable, which is length in centimeters. Be sure to include your units. And I've entered in a few data points, and of course you would keep entering them in. My second dependent vari variable, leaf area, centimeter squared, and then my SPAD readings for chlorophyll content. Now, like I said, you may wonder why plants 1 through 10 are all garlic mustard, but they have different temperatures. So the first five are at 25 degrees, the second five are at 30 degrees. Well, it's because I want to make the specific plants line up with each cell of my design. So, for example, the first five plants, plants numbers 1 through 5, correspond to the first treatment, which is garlic mustard grown at 25 degrees. So garlic mustard grown at 25 degrees. All right, same thing with the second set of five plants, plants number six through 10. They are garlic mustard plants grown at 30 degrees in temperature. I would do the same thing with the last 10 plants. Plants numbers 11 through 15 are American ginseng grown at 25 degrees. So American ginseng grown at 25 degrees. And the last five, plants number 16 through 20, are American ginseng grown at 30 degrees, so this cell of the design. American ginseng grown at 30 degrees. I hope this has helped you learn how to keep an organized lab notebook that'll be beneficial whenever you start entering your data into spreadsheets. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask your TA and we'll be able to help you in any way we can. Uh, have a great day. Thanks.